Uh, hi, Matthew. Um, I don't know how much time you've had to, to speak to, to the guys now, but can you sort of take us in and, and just tell us how painful it is at the moment losing all these games? Uh, yeah, no, I haven't had a chat to, uh, to the boys yet. Um, yeah, very painful. I think um, you know, we set out, uh, we knew it was going to be hard work today, India on their home patch. Um, and to be honest, I was really pleased at the halfway mark. I thought it was definitely our best bowling and fielding effort. And we went out to bat with a lot of positivity about um, it being a, you know, a, a very achievable total. Um, there was a lot of dew out there as well. So I thought, um, particularly after the start we got, um, none for 30 that we we're in well placed. But any time you lose four for 10, uh, you put yourself under pressure and chase and um, it unraveled again from there, unfortunately. Yeah, like that, that unraveling, when it, when it happens, it's been happening when it happens, it's been happening faster. Are you sensing almost a, a, a fearfulness in the team that they could almost see the thing disappearing from them as soon as the first setback happens? No, not, not really. I think um, when you've seen that happen a couple of times uh, you know, recently, it does you know, affect the, the confidence, no doubt. Um, when, you, when you're winning, you can absorb a couple of wickets and seem to, to get through. But tonight, um, as I said, we're none for 30. Uh, I wasn't sure... Um, a, you know, we lost the wicket there. I wasn't sure about Joe's one. How um, I was pretty clear on the technology. There was a little uh, spike there, so I'm not sure why we didn't use that. But then it happened, bang, bang, and we're under pressure. And uh, they bowled extremely well. They were, you know, in their home conditions, they they did well. And I think probably deserve a lot of credit the way they managed through that dew as well. I thought we we tried to hold on uh, and get some partnerships together, but we just kept losing uh, a wicket every time we looked like getting a bit of a foundation. So. Um, yeah, disappointing. You, you guys have talked about recovering some pride, being hungry to sort of get some some of that pride back. Is that changing now? We sort of almost no chance of of really improving things. Is it almost like it'd be better just to, to get home and, and draw a line under this one? No, not not at all. I, I think um, yeah, it's tough. It's uh, you know I'm sick of coming up and speaking to you guys about the same thing. Um, but that's what professional sport is, and we've got to keep pushing hard here. We've got a fair bit to play for to the back end of this tournament. I think the way that we went out and fielded and bowled today showed the commitment of the group. Um, and that's, that's the main part of this. You've got to keep fronting up and commit, throw yourself around in the field. I thought we were, were brilliant there. Um, and, and the first half we did our job. The second half was um, one we'd rather forget and we've got to find a way. There's some world-class players in there that um, unfortunately aren't scoring the runs that they're used to scoring. And it, and it looks like you're going to need to finish top eight to, to qualify for the Champions Trophy. I know it's, an, I know it's two years away or whatever, but um, that's looking a bit of a stiff task in itself now. That's got to be um, a concern. Yeah, I suppose to your point earlier, it, it gives us a lot of focus that we need to make sure we can't you know, just turn up. We've got to turn up and play and, and win those games. And we're, we're obviously up against some good teams in those last few games as well. So uh, that's plenty of motivation for us to pick ourselves back up off the canvas and, and keep trying to throw punches. Matthew, I don't know if you've seen, but Owen Morgan said that given how badly the decisions have been made have gone and how England have gone away from the white ball cricket makes him think that something is going on in the dressing room. Is something going on? No, not really. I, I, I don't think that at all. I think anyone that's inside our tent at the moment would say um, that despite our results, we're, we're an incredibly tight-knit unit um, to the point where... One of our, I said to the boys the other day, uh, Dave Humphreys, who's the former rugby international, um, was flabbergasted just how tight the unit was uh, when he came in for a week to observe us, um, given that the results that we've had. So there's every opportunity when you're losing to splinter and go separate ways. I, I, I can only say, um, from my opinion, the group's been incredibly strong in that part. If you see our training sessions, they're full of fun. People are you know, putting their arm around each other, trying to help them. and. Um, you know, it's it's easy to do that when you're winning. It's a lot harder when you're losing, and I'm I'm, I'm proud that we keep we keep trying to get up. Chris, and then Simon, or you? Um, just just to follow that up. I mean, it's great that everyone's having a great time, but are you sure there's nothing going on? Owen's pretty clued up guy. He's got ears in the dressing room. I kind of I find it quite hard to believe that he'd be way off the mark with that. Yeah, no, I've, Owen's entitled to his opinion. I haven't, I've, he's obviously been away for a couple of weeks with the birth of his child. Um, he hasn't been in and around the rooms, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly um, take that up with him and have, have a chat to him. We've got a really good relationship with him. So if he's seeing something that I'm not, um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely have that conversation. Um, there were some positives today that we probably shouldn't 
lose oh, sight of nice. entirely. Oh, here we go. Uh, and, um, Chris Ropes bowled really well. You were bowling through seven overs at the start. Yeah. It, it must have been a really tough time for him. Um, what? Like, how has that been for him? And how happy were, were you with how he came back from that today? Yeah, I'm very, very happy for, for Wokesy. I think um, he obviously didn't start the tournament the way he would have liked, but um, you know, Joss in particular as, cap as captain um, likes to reward guys that have done well over a, a long period of time. I think the faith that he showed, um, you know, he obviously missed the game, and I think that was probably timely for him just to, to work through some, some things in the nets, come back, and since he's come back, I think he's been excellent. Um, even bowling at the back end, you know, like that's an unfamiliar role for him. Um, and you know they, they were looking dangerous there that they could just you know put it you know, beyond 250 and I thought we did really well and, and Wokes is a big part of that so definitely a positive. Um, I thought Dave Willey again was another one who was who's come into the side later in the tournament um, and is always underestimated but always delivers so um, you know, and a little cameo at the end with the bat so look I think um, those, those guys are really good I thought Rash bowled well as well um, and put plenty of pressure on as I said, there's no problems with the first half. I thought um, we, we were bitten, bitten your hand off for 2.30 uh, with the, the conditions the way they were going to be tonight, but um, unfortunately we couldn't deliver. Uh, hi, Matthew. Could I check um, when you knew what the qualification uh, procedure was for the Champions Trophy, please? When did you and the team know? When did I let the team know? No, when did you and the team learn what the qualification for the Champions Trophy was? Uh, about an hour and a half ago. Right. That, that seemed incredible to come into a major global event not knowing what the qualification for the next global event is, doesn't it? Well, the, the ICC do change the rules quite a bit with qualification. And to be honest, I don't think it would affect in any way the way we've played in this tournament. So it's not a big deal. Okay, thank you. Coach, I just, I'm sure you must have been asked this a few times, but uh, just to know a little bit more um, you know how has it all come so undone for the team which is the defending champion like where have things gone wrong and have you really thrashed it out with the players and the team um, well yeah I, I suppose the latest thing has been our batting's the thing that's gone wrong um, there's no secret that we keep getting bowled out before that we get our full um, allotment of 50 overs so that, that would be a big part of it um, I never really buy into the defending champions thing. I think everyone starts on the same points, um, and you know we knew we, were, we would have to play out of our skin to, to qualify for the top four here. There's a lot of good teams here, and a lot of teams that play really well in these conditions. So, as a team coming over, we, we started with a lot of optimism, um, but it you know it hasn't worked out. And as we, as we mentioned before, we've got a lot to still play for for the end of this tournament. Um. Matthew, just wondering uh, your observations on Joss and how he's been handling what's probably been the most, the biggest challenge of his career and certainly his captaincy. Yeah, what's he been like in the dressing room? I think he's been great, to be honest. I think Joss is um, you know, an incredibly deep thinker about the game. Uh, he, he's First and foremost, I think he's just disappointed with his own form of the bat. I think he's, um, he felt like he came over here in really good form. He usually leads from the front and scores a lot of runs. So I think that's probably been the hardest thing to deal with. That dressing room's full of really good characters and guys with a lot of experience, and they've really helped a lot. I think Mo and Ali, uh, Ben Stokes, Johnny Besto, Joe Root, guys like that have played around him a lot, have really tried to, to take the pressure off him. But like all of us, we're, it's an incredibly difficult period. I think uh, we won't forget this one for a long time. Um, but what you do in, in elite sport is, is you, you've got to learn when you, hit, when you hit the canvas and you keep getting kicked while you're down, uh, you store that away and you make sure you, you use that as motivation to, to keep getting better and making sure it doesn't happen again. And um, Joss is definitely in that boat.